Good morning. Let us make some mango kuchila together. And yes, we're cooking okra too. So I want now my uncle. I want now my uncle and mom. Remember that wonderful little vegetable store I took you to a couple weeks ago. I went on and I got some Julie mangoes. They have some nice, firm, green Julie mangoes. And let me tell you something with Kuchila. You could use any type of mango, you know. You could use any type of mango. I happen to love Julie mangoes because they carry with them a certain sweetness, even, even in the green stage. And if it is that you've had a lot of experience around mangoes, you must know what a Julie mango looks like. You see this nice little um, pink hue, this nice little light red blush on this side of the mango. When the Julie mango is ripened, or as it ripens, this pink blush will spread across the entire mango, across the face, across this other face, and you'll have a nice pink um, Julie mango mixed with some red and a little orange and yellow. Yeah, so let's grate them up. I have already started to grate one of the mango, and I will leave the skin on the mangoes. You don't have to peel the mango when you're making kuchila. Okay, so you just keep going grating. Be careful with your fingers, of course. Because, I mean, if these things could grate a mango, it could very well grate your finger, too. And we're making mango kuchila. Not Ellis kuchila. Get as much of the green flesh off as possible. Okay, so repeat. How many more times? Six more times. And yes, you will get mango shreds flying everywhere in your kitchen. <laughs> Just be prepared for that. That's part of the process. That's part of the kuchila experience. And really, you know, the hardest part in making kuchila is the grating. This is the most difficult part I'm tackling right now. So, you know, if you have a close friend or a sibling who's willing, to be with you, you have a little cousin, you know, I sure somebody must have a little cousin somewhere who looks up to them, willing to help them with anything, call them up and you know, just have a kuchila day. This is what a basin of eight grated julie mangoes look like. Eight grated mangoes. Say that five times fast. All right. And this is the reality of your kitchen sink after you would have grated your mangoes. See, these are the seeds, and um, we're not wasting what's on the grater. Eh? You see, we're scraping out all of that. We don't waste mango in this house. So we just set that aside for a little bit. But I wanted to show you all up close what grated mango looks like. Okay, um, for those who would have grown up making kuchila grated mango, uh, this is a familiar sight, of course. But you know, for the benefit of those who really don't know what goes into kuchila making this is how this is how the kuchila starts out shredded mango now that i have my mangoes all nice and grated up the next very important step is to add some salt to this beautiful basin of shredded mango season it as if it is you are going to be cooking a talcari okay and the reason for the salt is because it's going to add flavor yes but it is going to draw out all the excess moisture from the mango because you don't want a soggy kuchla. If you have a soggy kuchla, uh, the texture would be sort of off and the shelf life will be shorter. So, you just mix it around. I think I may have to put a little more. I underestimated how much mango is inside there, you know, because look, it's just so compact. It's heavy, it's dense, so it's compact. It's going to take out some of the starchiness and the sourness from the mango too. You still want to retain some of the sourness of the mango, eh? To give it that classic mango kuchla taste. You see in that the shredded mango is getting a bit shinier. Right. So as I'm turning the mango and I'm talking to you, the mango has already started to spring water, as we say in Trinidad. It started spring water already. It's okay. been 15 minutes and I want to show you something amazing. Take a look at what's happening here. See that? 
that is the liquid I was mentioning earlier. Yes, we are going to get rid of this. We are going to discard this because it's very acidic. Mangoes are very, very acidic. Uh, they have, I know for sure they have something called citric acid as well as ascorbic acid, among others. You could Google it. Bearing that in mind, I've covered my metal sheet pan with a layer of foil because of the fact that the acid can be corrosive to metal. And I want to preserve my metal pan. <laughs> right. Now you can use cheesecloth, but here in Trinidad, we use a sappy. This is a a sappy is basically a kitchen towel or a piece of cloth that you use in the kitchen to either remove hot pans and pots off of the stove. You could use a sappy to move your towel off of the stove too when it's hot. And you use a sappy, you could put your roti in it too. It's a little discolored because it's not, this is not going to be the first kuchula it is making. You take some of the shredded mango, take a good amount, give it a good ring. And squeeze out all of that liquid well not all I beg your pardon not all of the liquid but the majority of it and you know if you don't have time to do a regular workout in your kitchen you could always squeeze some shredded mangoes <laughs> develop the biceps and the triceps so let me show you what it looks like when it has been squeezed see yep this is the texture you're looking for still moist but way drier than it was before okay this will go directly onto the covered sheet pan and repeat a few more times yeah my cousin now um, my cousin this is fat pork yeah but we don't eat pork boy so what will happen there now <laughs> This is what we call fat pork in Trinidad. Is there another name for it? I don't know if there's another name for it, but this is what, if ever you hear about fat pork, this is what it looks like. It's not actually pork. It's a fruit. And uh, my cousin Des brought, this is his bag of mangoes, eh? By the way. But he tell me I could take a few and I'll show you what a long mango looks like. This is, but this looking like a starch kind of way, kind of way. All right, this is more like the long mango situation. And it's fresh. See, look at the stem there. This is where it was attached to the tree, where it was attached to the stem. It's green. I still see any sap running down. Be careful, wash your hand if you touch that. Yeah. Yes, man. So this is our grated mango which has been salted squeezed and now i'm just trying to get as thin a layer as possible on the sheet pan i think i'll have to go in there with my hand yes yeah and it's okay to use your hands once your hands are clean and just sort of break up the bits and chunks of the shredded mango which would have formed clumps due to the squeezing and just utilize the entire surface of your sheet pan long time we used to put it on a piece of galvanize or galvanage my uncle papa used to call it galvanage this is the complete tray of grated mango see give you a nice close-up it's so pretty it's so pretty so this tray is going to go out in the sun now i have my fingers crossed because we had to get in sun these days <laughs> i can't let go this to pause you know so <laughs> we go in I'm going to put it right on this chair here. Yes! Hannah! It looks so different in the sun! Oh my gosh! And having the mangoes dried in the sun too will give it an extra level of flavor. It's going to taste sun-dried or what we like to say sun-kissed. You will taste the sun in your kuchila, which is a classic flavor profile when you're dealing with kuchila or anchar or amchar. Nice weather.
We may get some rain later on. This is how it goes. And what you could do is wash your sati and put it in the sun to dry too. You see how it has become stained because of the mango juice? That's okay. Reserve your sappy, yeah? Don't throw away your sappy. And I don't want to use Clorox or bleach on it because I find that the residual taste of the bleach kind of takes away. It sort of taints the taste of the kuchila. Yeah, so we have one Clorox and no um, kuchila. Sappy and mango together in the sun. <laughs> Cora sun. Chambers is saying. Dry the mango! <laughs> Things switch up in my kitchen pretty quickly. <laughs> From mango to dashing bush. Let me show you the sink situation at the moment. Dashing bush baji or dashing bush baji. So we have it in stages. This is the this is the um, bunch. I bought two bunches. Um, or two bundles as we see. Two bundles of dashing bush baji. Taro leaves. Alright, this is what they look like. Baji. Kalalu leaves. This is how I got them by the vegetable stall. These are the stalks which I detached from the leaves. And these are the leaves which have been cut up. So I'll just continue down the road cutting up my baji. We eaten dashing bush and roti this evening. Sada roti and baji. Real simple, real nice. I just had to throw this in there and tantalize you guys a little bit. How would you look? Alright, so I have my dashing bush pieces all prepped and ready. This, these are the stalks. These are pieces of the stalks. And if your hand doesn't look like this, <laughs> let me see if I can show you better. This is a dashing bush peeling hand. <laughs> yeah, you know, they say put oil or put some lemon juice or something on it, but I sometimes forget. One of the most important things you must remember when making kuchila, you have to use your ears when you're making kuchila. It is important for you to use the sense of hearing because we in the rainy season in Trinidad, right? And you really don't want the rain to fall and flood out your tray of shredded mango because you'll cry. So if you hear any drizzle, run outside and bring your tray inside. I cannot tell you how many times as a little girl, mom used to have me running to pick up mango from the galvanized. And you know something, I'd give anything to run outside and pick up mango for my mother now. As soon as I walked up the steps, I was... I sat, as soon as I walked up the steps, I started to smell it. Look at this. You'd see that... Um, well, they've been in the sun for about an hour and a half now. And the pieces are starting to change color. And it's really smelling sun-kissed sun-dried yeah I think they just need um a couple hours again a couple hours again and that's going to be sufficient I don't want it too dry there are some people who want it real real dry almost like um, they'd bring it to a crunchy state I don't want it like that okay it's a mango Lots and lots of seasoning. I know you like to see the pot with the chunky, you know. I know this is one of the best parts. Who doesn't love to see these aromatics being cooked or fried or sauteed or chunkied in some oil in a talcary pot? It's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Whoops. Let's put some salt. The salt will actually help the badger melt down, eh? Yeah. Be careful with your salt. Um, be careful when you're adding your salt. I always say that. There's a lot of badger, do. And just give it a gentle toss every now and then. And while you're tossing your baji, just keep your ear open for a drizzle. Then remember your mango outside. <laughs> I'm telling you something, eh? Sometimes you get a bottle of dashing bush that for not for nothing would that dashing bush melt down in your pot, you know, man. 
That's how lucky today. I got this by uncle and he always has the best dashing bush. And mom, I was so happy to see her this morning. She was smiling and happy. Yeah, man. Let's go check our mango outside. Look how beautiful the badge has melted down. And you might still see bits and pieces of the stalks in there. Just take the back of your pot spoon and go in there and flatten it out. <laughs> flatten it out because as you can already see, I have in this pot the texture that I was looking for, right? And it's okay if you get one or two whole pieces of the stalk in there. So, to this, to this. Oh, by the way, by the way, I have my oil hot enough for fry bake because my children say they're feeling to eat um, fry bake with the bhaji. In with the coconut milk. Just leave it to sort of simmer on low heat for a few minutes. When I turn the heat off, I'll add a little lime juice. Look how nice and creamy this bhaji is. Focus camera. Nice, creamy bhaji. Yes, man. So I have my roti flour all kneaded up and uh, waiting. And we need to let it rest. But we say we're letting it soak. So those brown bits and pieces that you're seeing peeping through the flour, those are flax seeds. Yes, just for a little texture. Okay, I have a bottle. I have a bottle of lemon juice here, and I usually use I usually use fresh squeeze, but since I have this big bottle, I'll use it out, and I'll just put like a teaspoon, just a little teaspoon. You will not believe how that little, that small teaspoon of lemon juice inside this bhaji will elevate the flavor. Yes, that lemon juice will transform this bhaji into a, a, a through the roof situation. So this is my fry bake flour <laughs> with flaxseed. We're going to fry some fry bake. So, oh my gosh, I tied up myself even before I start. We are going to fry some flaxseed flour. Say that five times fast. I'm making pillow bakes. I'm not making the individual rounded um, type of fry bakes. The ones that you get when you go to buy bacon shark, no, and I'm making those. So let us put a couple of bakes in the oil and see what's going on. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Popping up real quick, real nice. Put this guy over. Put this guy over. And listen, while my bakes are frying, I have a situation going on in the back here, you know. Fry planting, y'all. When last you all had fry planting, real fry planting, not moko. Fry plantains. Yeah, these are my flax seed fry mix. Fry planting. Um, this is how I like my fry planting like this really nice and crispy on the edges soft and chewy on the inside with that um not burnt but that nice smoky caramelized flavor that you get from doing planting this way from doing the right plantains this way you know what i mean man if you if you've ever fried plantains right plantains you know what i mean and then we have we dashing bush bhaji talcari eh eh and we have um, Mr. Man on top, nice and snug in the center of the situation there. Yeah, this is our dinner. Simple, nice, delicious. I can't wait to sit down and eat it with my girls. And I know that you're all seeing something in the corner there. Yes, this is the mango. Right, this is the mango. It just needs, I'd say, a couple hours more sun. But 
we didn't get that this evening hopefully tomorrow you'll be able to put it back out there but that's how it goes sometimes this I just cover with a very very light cloth and let a fan blow on it overnight just to have some air current circulating over it to avoid mold and fungus developing in my mango in my kuchila yeah so this was my day this was part of my day a very exciting part of my day and don't worry So you're looking for mustard oil. My suggestion to you would be to find yourself in the oil section. This is the oil section in Cos Casas. They've got a lot of different types of oil. Vegetable, canola, soya bean, oils for um, salad, <laughs> oils for frying, oil for everything. And I'm in luck. This is the mustard oil. Right now what I'm seeing is just uh, one brand, Chef Mate. And as you can see on the label, it's good for preserving mango, tam well, tamran and palm city. Yeah, so I'll take. And I don't know what's the difference. I wonder what's the difference between the two. Is there a difference at all? Let's see. No, I don't think so. It's just that the expiry dates are different. Yeah, I think I'll go with this one. Maybe we could call Mr. Gopal and find out. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for, but this pack is very small. I want a huge pack of anchor masala. Eh, eh. Eh, eh. What we gonna do? Many times you'd have more than one um, <laughs> section designated to spices. I just walked around I'll take this big pack because they want a lot of anchor masala going inside it your kuchila all right it's the second day I have my mango drying outside but in total I'd say this batch of shredded mango would have gotten at least at least four hours of sunlight exposure You can see that they started to shrink as they get dehydrated and this is exactly what I'm looking for. Time to take my mango inside. Oh, I miss them, I miss them. Oh. I was trying to get the whole flock flying over the house. This is a weird hour for them to pass through though. <laughs> and Fred and Wilma are trying to mimic the parrots. You're trying to sound like parrots. You're trying to sound like parrots. Aww. They call Sydney a lot for food. Well, we have we have to go and collect school reports today in Tacres, but I'm mixing my kuchla before we go. I'll mix my kuchla and put it down. I'll go get some okra and uh, salt fish because I want to make fried okra, aloo, uh, fried okra with aloo and salt fish with sataruti to go with this kuchla. This. This, that's the meal I'm going to be testing on my kuchla with. So as you can see, I have four heads of garlic. I put in lots and lots of garlic, lots and lots of shadow benny, and I think six scotch bonnet peppers will be more than enough. Mustard oil, salt, anchor masala, kuchila, 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 all right? So. 
Yeah. Yes, we'll grind them up. Okay, so let me just prep these veggies, these aromatics, and we'll mix. I want to show you all something. Look at what's happening there. Look at what's happening there. The shadow benny started to send out roots. So I'll probably cut it like from right here and place it in some water for the roots to further develop. And we can plant them and see if we get shadow benny. We are going to put all of these things in our kuchila. Don't mind my Christmas plate, eh? My Christmas plate comes out during the year at all times. <laughs> Remember in primary school, they used to ask you, um, when you were now learning about colors, you, you used to have fun mixing colors. Well, we had the red and the yellow scotch bonnet peppers blended together, creating this beautiful orange mixture. The garlic on that side, the shadow benny. Okay, so let's mix. Come here, mango. Just put everything in first and then add the salt. You may have to add some sugar. The sugar is optional, but in some cases, it is actually going to make for a better kuchila. Okay, so I'm going to add the ancho masala now. I grew up making kuchila from small, so I can't really give you exact measurements. Just eyeball everything. Um, the ancho masala, you want a good amount. If you're not sure about the measurements at first, just add a little at a time and work your way up until you get what it is you're looking for. Taste as you go along too. Bear in mind you are dealing with scotch bonnet peppers. There's going to be heat everywhere on everything that you touch. Yeah. So you see how that looking there? Still kind of um, still kind of yellowish. I want to put a little more anchor masala inside there. Next, we're going in with the mustard oil. And the mustard oil, really, I may have mentioned it, I can't remember, but it does add flavor and, and it's an excellent preservative. You might get nervous at first, eh? you might say, hey boy, I added a lot of things inside here, but don't be afraid. Things like kuchula, and anchar call for a lot of mustard oil and anchar masala. Go in there with the salt. So my kuchla calls for some sugar. Let's continue to mix and have fun mixing. Sing a song. I think, I think I know what kind of song comes to my ear. Yeah? I can't sing it, I don't want to sing it. Oh yeah, this is kuchila darling. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. I don't have to say mm -mm -mm or mm -hmm. so you know I could probably alternate the two <laughs> but yes this is my kuchula situation now wait let me show you something I'm going to slice these up I had um, a blended four of the peppers but I kept these two because I want to slice them I want to see bits and pieces of the red and the yellow popping out, coming out from the kuchula. There you go. You see? You see? It already. There we have it. Mango kuchula. With lots of, I ended up putting extra pepper in there because I wanted, I wanted good heat in this kuchula. Yeah, but it's so delicious. The longer you leave your kuchula to sit or soak as we say in Trinidad is the better because that would actually mean that the flavors will be able to develop more yes my mouth is watering while we were waiting for the kuchula to soak it's still soaking by the way the big basin of kuchula is soaking we got some we went down the road and we got the results the children's results they did very very good they both got A's and we stopped by uncle and got some um, ingredients. We got the okras. Some nice okras. I'll cut them up just now and show you what I'll do with them. And we got a nice piece of saltfish. This is salted fish. Local saltfish. 
right? I know that some of you would be accustomed with the boneless um, tallfish that comes in a blue. Uh, most times it come in a blue pack, right? But this, I got this by uncle too. I will show you how to prepare this. Going down the road, I have my container here with some shadow benny, garlic, onion, uh, one small onion, a few garlic cloves, and some, what do we call those again, Sydney? A tired, you know, a little tired. Mm. Pimento Pimples. peppers, right. And I have my little strainer with my compost there. I think the Julie mango tree will get this, this set today, all right? Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do with the okra, let me show you. I washed, dried, and cut up all my okras, and now I'm going to put them in the sun on my bench. Yeah, I turn the bench around so that it will be able to get the sun. I just want the okra to be a little sun kissed. So you see, I turn my bench around. The sun is dipping. Now, what's what's the time now, boy? This is 2:40 p.m. Eh, eh. 2:40 p.m. Exact. Let me give Holly a better view. No filter, people. No filter. Right? Natural, natural stuff. All right. So, what does the sun do to the okra? The sun is going to flavor the okra. Believe it or not. The same way the sun flavored the kuchla, the same way it's going to flavor the okra, as well as it's going to dry up some of that uh, sliminess and the stickiness in the okra. A lot of people like that. I do like it too. Either way, it's fine for me. I'm just trying it a different way today. Hi. This <laughs> my little okra. Look at them okra fish. And yes, I wear my mango earrings. Cause I'm making, cause I'm making mango kuchula. Yeah. So you know, you're just gonna wait around a little bit. You know, for the sun to dry up the okra a little bit. Papa, you. All right, salt fish. Let me take it out so you can see. Basically, what this is is salted fish. A lot of people refer to it as corn fish. Um, it's fish preserved with a great amount of salt, a high quantity of salt left in the sun to cure. Sun again, you see, this is, we eating sun foods today, boy. Like, I need a shares for this thing, boy. Hold on. I pretending like I don't have the, the perfect tool for this thing. Eh, eh. Eh, eh. Look at that. I don't even have to exert much energy. I say that all the time. Make sure you're cutting the fish and not your finger. Right? This is the piece we're using. Just break this down a little further. We're using all of this too, you know. I'll show you how to prepare it. Wouldn't take long. Okay. Make sure you wash your hands and your knives and your scissors properly. Have some boiling water here. Gently put your salt fish inside there. Gently put your salt fish inside there. And we'll let it boil for... We'll check it after five minutes and see what's going on. Okay? It hits differently when the sun shines on it, eh? Yep, so differently when the sun shines on it. I'll try to show you all as many things in the sun as possible. Look at our China now, boy. Eh, eh. The glittering boy. <laughs> glittering. Everything shining in the sun. All right, let me see how best I could show you what's going on here. So the salt fish, boil the salt fish for approximately 10 minutes just to get rid of the salt and to soften it up. If you boil it properly, the skin will be soft and you can just take your knife and gently scrape off that layer of skin. See, because that layer of skin will have 
the scales of the fish on it. Here you go. Do it as gently as possible and just kind of run your knife in there. Just pull out any piece of tissue that you think might be tough. Like this line in here. See? And just get in there. Pull it apart with your fingers. See? Now the piece of the bone. You see that there? Do the same thing with the skin. Of course, and just go inside there and gently remove what we call the picker. The pickers are basically fish bones. Okay, make sure you pull out all the picker. 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 Just go inside there, shred it up, which will make it easier for cooking. And it will also help you to catch any remaining fish bones or pickers inside there. yep that's just all the fish right there yeah that is your local salted fish right there man so I'll just take a little taste test the salt fish because it's salt fish so it's going to be salty this is good a lot of the salt has boiled away and been discarded and if it is that you find it's still salty just add a little bit of hot water let it soak and drain it again or just add a little bit of salt fish to your pot because all you really need is the flavor yeah but this real good boy very chunky there is a visible difference from when we first put it out to now you can see yeah so it's time to cook local salt fish sun-dried okros now you can leave your okros longer if you want it in the sun eh? I have my aloo here and my aromatics blend my pot heating up and it's okay to knock your pot before you start a cook eh? <laughs> that's correct see I start off with my salt fish And I will just leave the salt fish to fry until we have, you know, a good percentage of crispiness going on, or cripsiness. <laughs> this is going to happen. There will be a thin layer of salt fish flakes sticking to the bottom of the pot. This is how we dislodge it. We just take it back of the spoon and scrape it off and keep turning. You smelling it? You like how it smells? Eh? Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. Cripsy. Listen now, I just gonna say this all fish cripsy, right? Good amount of aromatics in here. You know what? I'll add all. We eat in seasoning too. What we add next? Oh crows. Oh crows, where are you? Here they are. Oops. I got some nice white potatoes. Bro. That is some nice white aloo. This is exactly how I wanted my talcari to come out, y'all. This is what I was craving. And this is what I was craving to eat my um, 
Kuchla with my mouth water in. Let me see if the aloo cook. Yes, the aloo is nice and tender. Tender aloo with saltfish, okra, aromatics, and, and, and kuchla. Let me show you what's under this, this floral towel, huh? this flowered towel. I have two nice little loys. Two baby loys, two popo loys. We're going to make two nice baby roti. <laughs> and this is going to actually be just enough for me and the ducklings. The best maruti swell today. <laughs> it ended up getting a little boost, but we get some hype, man. Yeah, we get some hype. That go work. This is the remainder of the roti. I tell you, we don't really eat much, you know. I know those two little rotis would have been enough for us. So this is Vakuchila. This is how how much I end up with. Okay, and I'm using from this bottle first. Obviously. The curry done not start to go down, boy. And this is my plate of food, y'all. Let's rotate a little bit. Okay. Let me start with the okra. I know you all got a close-up a little bit earlier, but it's different now because it's on a Christmas plate. Okay. <laughs> this is the okra, um, fried okra with aloo and saltfish. Lots of aromatics. Masala roti. Um, with a few bun parts, bun parts, eh? Bun. If you can call it bun, it do count. And the start of the show, the kuchla. I was fortunate to fish out a piece of the red salad inside there too. So yeah, this is what I was feeling to eat since morning. I saved my belly, you know. I saved my belly for this food. Well, you know what I mean. Guess who taught me to make kuchla? Yes, your belly. My belly. <laughs> Yeah, that's part of it too. Your my mom? mommy, yeah. My mommy taught me to make kuchila. So, let's take a taste test. <laughs> but first, I'd like to get some feedback from my ducklings. That's um, feedback number one. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Duckling approved. Duckling approved. Mm. Let's do this. We take a piece of the roti. Take a piece of the rotai. Yes. That's a long time joke, rotai. Rotai and bodai. Oh, you remember that joke? I know. Take up some of the okra. The okra and potato. Right? And take up some of the um, Suri. Selfish. Suri is narrated. There's a fly want to play fast here. Take up some of that kuchila. Oh, gosh. Kuchila. This is the mango kuchila. Bite. That is your mango kuchila bite right there. That is your mouthful of food. <laughs> Cheers. See, they mocking me. Ooh! Let me see how you do it. How you doing, Teddy? <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that was a bad. <laughs> That's exactly how I did it. Oh! Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You know, there's a meme with this guy saying that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. 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 How are you, Curtis? <laughs> you didn't taste the okra, why? Because, because I said I like the okra. Let me feed you a little piece here. She ran away. Siddi, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Hey, listen to me. Mm. This this is wedding kuchula, you know. This is wedding kuchula, y'all. This is wedding kuchula, y'all. You yeah, make kuchula like this. Somebody is going to get married. So let me tell you about this kuchila, right? 
It is a very delicious kuchula, if I do say so myself. You would have seen that I took a lot of care in my preparations from start to finish. I followed the process meticulously because I didn't want to make I didn't want to miss a step. I didn't want um I didn't want sapa kuchula basically is what I'm saying. So this time grated the mango, squeezed out the excess liquid, put it to dry, got the proper ingredients, mixed it well. And what is going to happen is that the kuchula is going to develop in flavor as the days go by. Yeah, providing that you don't eat it out one time or you don't eat it out soon. But the longer your kuchula sits, the more flavor is going to pack. <clears throat> now my kuchula, this kuchula, let me tell you what's going on with my kuchula. I'm not getting the full effect of the pepper while I chew. What is happening is that the residual uh, heat from the pepper actually intensifies inside my mouth long after I swallow my food. That heat will just keep building. It's a very, very flavorful kuchila. There is um, there's sweetness, there's uh, saltiness, heat, tasting the bits and pieces of the garlic, the bits and pieces of the shadow benny. Sometimes you'll get a little piece of pepper too, and it'll just burst in your mouth, explode. And it goes well with the okra, the alu, saltfish, and the other aromatics. You'd probably think that there's a lot going on on your plate so that the kuchula might get lost but no that's not going to happen not in this situation everything stands out on its own and everything blends well with each other they get to know longer everything on my plate gets to know longer that's what i try to say what do you think boy should i be adventurous should i be adventurous and eat this piece of pepper yes mm -hmm. Well, you didn't hesitate, boy. <laughs> you should just set up paper one in case. In Definitely. case. All right. Mmm. Oh, that is some good heat. I don't need the brown paper. They bring a paper bag for them. They brought a paper bag just in case. But no, it's some really good heat. <laughs> I like it. Would More you like roti. Some... You see how nice my roti pulling apart is because it's soft. But nice and so. Alright, I love all you. Thank you for making mango kuchula with me. Thank you for cooking saltfish and alu and uh, okra and sadaroti with me. See if you can find a little okra somewhere. Mango in season. I'll show you to get somebody to pick some green mangoes for you. Try a little kuchila. Try a little kuchila. Try a little roti and okra and alu. I love all you. Be happy, be, be safe. safe, we love all you. Ba! Kuchila ba! Kuchila ba! Mango ba! Mango ba! Amchar ba! Amchar ba! Thanks, mommy. Thanks for teaching me how to make kuchila. Listen, kuchila and everything. Kuchila and cricks and cheese. Kuchila and bread. Kuchila and butter and roti. Kuchila and dal and rice. What else? Kuchila and a ba, kuchila and alu pie, kuchila and baji rice, kuchila and fish broth, kuchila in soup, kuchila in pilau, kuchila and breadfruit, kuchila and curry chicken and dal and rice, kuchila and curry chicken and dal and rice. I run out of fingers and I run out of tattoos. Listen to me, kuchila and everything. <laughs>